us. Uh, today we have Noah Wyatt. Uh, I have been looking forward to do this video for the longest time. We finally got time to, or we kind of put the same accord on time now because we're three time, three hours away from each other. So we're finally able to meet up and talk about this book, A Gospel Impacted Life. Yes. Um, I do have my brother Wyatt here, but for those who don't know you, brother, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Noah Wyatt. I'm the author of A Gospel Impacted Life. Uh, I've been married to my wife, Megan, for four years now. I know on the back of the book it says almost two years, but it's been about four years now. So time is progressing and Lord willing, we'll have many more. Uh, years to spend together. Uh, so I'm also living currently, I know on the back of the book, it also says I'm in Dallas. Well, lots changed since then. I'm currently living in Indianapolis, Indiana. I, I'm helping plant Cruciform Bible Church, where I'm uh, the music minister there. I help lead music. Uh, and I'm also a deacon candidate. So I'm getting ready to go through examination, be ordained so I can be installed officially as a deacon. Yeah. So you do come from a Baptist uh, state. Um, yes. I used to live in, in Dallas, Texas, actually. I used to live in Garland. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, for, for a little bit there, I lived in Mesquite. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. and when I was uh, visiting my brother a few few months ago, I know you, um, which, by the way, you, like, recommended one of the best churches I've been in. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. as many yeah. people know, I'm, I'm a reform guy, uh, Dutch reform. Yes. And, and then Noah told me to go to this Presbyterian church and it was just the best time. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. It was a, it was a bilingual church. Yes. And man, we, we broke bread. It was, it was awesome. So <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah, but let's talk a little bit about a gospel impacted life. I mean, it's only, it's only 66 pages and oh man, it is deep. It is a beautiful subject. Every time I get to read about the gospel, I, I think it's just a beautiful thing. But one thing is reading a, a you know nice word, you know nice words, and another thing is to to read words that you know the author actually means, and they're just so heavy on the author's heart, and you can see it coming out of the pages. And I I thought, man, I love this book. The subject is is just a beautiful subject, and um. As I was saying, uh, I was I was saying before that, like this book really reminds me of of, you know, that sermon that John uh, that Paul Washer preached once, and talking about how the gospel actually changes you. And there is a clip, there is a there is a moment in this in this sermon where he says, uh, "Just imagine if I said that I just got ran over by a car and there's not a scratch on me," and he says, "Well, that's pretty much a Christian." not walking the Christian life, um, just faking it. And uh, I know we were having a conversation before this, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you speak more than I speak because <laughs> people don't like to hear my voice that much. So tell me a little bit about a gospel impacted life, how it came about, what was the thoughts behind it and what is exactly, because what I was saying earlier today uh, before we, we started recording was that, for me, this is a very heavy subject, and you have to be very careful when you write, write a, a subject like this. Um, so just tell us a little bit about the process, how it came about, how long it took you to write it. Yeah, so I originally had the idea for A Gospel Impacted Life back in 2019, so a few months before COVID-19 and the pandemic. Uh, I had the idea because as I was a youth pastor at the time, I had teens in my youth group and I was going out and doing evangelism at the abortion mill and on the street corners. And I, I had people coming up to me all the time telling me that they, they didn't need the gospel or they didn't need this because they already were a Christian. And I would say, well, why do you think you're a Christian? And it was always the same. Well, I, I grew up in a Christian home. I go to church on Sunday. I went and said a prayer. You know, I, I went, mm -hmm. followed this altar call. I did this, this, and this. It was essentially the gospel of me or the gospel of I, I did this. Uh, and I never really got a clear answer as to whether or not they were genuinely saved by the gospel of Christ, because Jesus wasn't mentioned until I said, well, what about what did Jesus do for you? you know, what, what happened? So I had this idea that as Christians, you know, the gospel really does. It comes in and it impacts, it changes all of our life. Uh, so after the, the pandemic, I had a lot more time. Uh, so I sat down and I started writing this. It took me about... Uh, in total, it took me about five to six months to, to completely write it. So 
I, I wanted to be, like you were saying, I wanted to be careful in what I said. I wanted to make sure that what I said was factual, that it lined up with scripture, but I also wanted to make sure that I was uh, being the most honest I could be. So writing this book uh, was a very, it was a convicting book to write because there are areas in, in my own life, even still today, where the gospel hasn't truly impacted it. We're, I mean, we're like, we're like these creatures who like to have these little corners of our lives shaved off. You know, we don't, we don't want to God or, or Christ to touch these corners. And so um, it was convicting to, to write things uh, to, of that nature, especially about my marriage. I mean, I was a newlywed at that time. So there's a lot of sanctification and growth that goes into to being married. So, uh, but a gospel impacted life. I mean, I, I finished it in 2020 and that's why I started distributing it and making sure that it was going to the people who, who would say, you know, I'm a Christian because I, you know, fill in the blank. I wanted to make sure that it was going to those Christians. And, and, and also, I wanted to make sure it was going to the Christians who perhaps um, maybe understood or have had their gospel or their life impacted by the gospel. Uh, because I think it's a, it's a good reminder that we need often, right? So the church that I go to now, we do communion uh, weekly. Uh, and it's a weekly reminder of, of Christ. I mean, we're weekly partaking of the, the flesh and blood of Christ. And, and spiritually, we're being grown by that. And so the, the same with these these books, uh, no matter the length, whatever it is, it's about the gospel. Every Christian needs that all the time. And I I think that the the what what always like got me is that the simplicity of the gospel and the death in it. You know, it's just it's simple that you can understand it, and so deep that your brain cannot wrap like you cannot wrap your your brain around it you know just yeah. knowing like the the magnitude of god's love and the magnitude of god's wrath um because we do live in a society where it's all where it's all love 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 god's love god's love and we never speak of god's wrath and i know you bring this up in in, in, in the book as well but i think it's just i think in in in, in terms of speaking of the good news there has to be bad news, like you said. You know, there has to be bad news in order for there, to, for you know, for there to be good news. So, could you just give us a little bit? Because we have seven, we have six chapters in this book, and then I always call the introduction a chapter because it really reads like a chapter. So it's seven chapters, and the first one or the or the introduction, you you talk about the gospel. So yeah. just in, in very plain, in very very simple words, what is the gospel? Uh, the gospel or the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of kingdom uh, of the kingdom, it has many names in the New Testament, but essentially it can be defined as uh, Jesus Christ, the son of God, the perfect lamb who takes away the sins of the sin of the world, as John the Baptist puts it, hmm. dying in your place, reconciling you to God. He, he, the message that Jesus preached was whoever would believe on him or whoever would believe and, and turn from their sin. Uh, would be saved that instead of God looking down at you and seeing your sin your filthiness uh, God would look down and he would see his perfect son and his spotlessness right right now tell me what is not the gospel <laughs> what the gospel isn't the gospel is not anything but that I mean so we we put everything in place of the gospel whether it be the gospel would to some people, the gospel would be right being a good parent, mm. or really, it comes down to works righteousness. So, I'm doing this in return. God is going to give me this, which is a, a concept completely foreign to the Bible, to the actual gospel. Uh, so, we put a lot of things in place of it. The gospel is not works righteousness. The gospel is not uh, objectivity. You know, whichever religion gets you to where you need to go. Uh, the gospel is not this magic word that you say that somehow everybody ends up becoming reconciled to God or there was no reconciliation needed in the first place. Those things are, are not the gospel. Those are actually idols. Those are things to be repented of. Yeah. And uh, just to quote you, uh, page 13 says the false gospel of today is that man is mostly good and can be reconciled to God in any other way besides Christ. I mean, uh, we were we we're having a conversation about that a little bit before we started recording, talking about how just pretty much any cult or any anything that does not put Christ as the center or does not put the put Christ as your savior. Right. It's just 
I mean, it may sound good, but it's as good as the as the flame of, of hell, you know, and and you know, I, I just think that there's a lot of that in this book. There's a lot of like little, you know, if you when you're talking about quotes, and I know you're not you're not writing a book full of quotes. When you're talking about quotes, there's so many things that you can just like stop and read and meditate on just on one little sentence. And that was like very I really appreciated that of this book because um, even though it's a short book, it took me longer to read because I kept thinking about what you just had said. And here's the thing. A lot of people may think of uh, things like, oh, I don't I don't need to read that book because I already know what the gospel is. But right. the thing is that um, there is a there is a saying in Spanish that every head it's its own world. So we all have like different you know, testimonies. We all have different points of views, different things. But even though we have all those exp different experiences, the gospel is one. The gospel is the same gospel, the gospel of Christ. And when someone else brings it in a very different way than your own, than your own, you know, uh, testimony or your own experiences, when you hear someone else speak of the gospel in a in a different way, but not that it's a different gospel, but the same gospel in a very different um, uh, perspective, or that brings up the you know brings brings to light things that you never thought about. I think that's that's a very important thing. So when You know, there was a few things in this book that I was like, huh, you know, I, I, I never thought of that, you know, now it doesn't mean I never heard the gospel before that, that I, I think I made that point. I think it's just, it's really important to read and be reminded of the beautiful, like truth of the Bible when it speaks about Christ right. giving, you know, his life for us. Right. So there is another chapter here. Um, um, I, uh, chapter one is uh, the gospel in you. But I do want to talk about something you bring up as chapter two, because you were talking about your spouse and how like it was edifying for you and sanctifying for you. Um, this this right here was was really good. Actually, it says your marriage. This is chapter two, page 30. It says your marriage will scream the gospel because its main focus is glorifying God. Could you tell yeah. us a little bit about what you meant with that? Yeah. So. Uh, like I said, uh, when I wrote this, I was uh, a newlywed. And so just thinking through the implications of, of what it means to be married. No, don't get me wrong. I did do that before I got married. But even after you're married and you realize, okay, this is a lot more responsibility than mm -hmm. the pastor told me in marriage counseling. You know, there's a lot more going on here. Uh, you have to consider the weight that Paul and Peter both bring up in there when they use marriage uh, to talk about the relationship between either Christ and the church yeah. or, or how really they bring it as an analogy of the gospel, uh, this reconciliation, this redemption, this saving. And so you have to think of the way, like, okay, as, as a husband, uh, me specifically as a husband, I represent Christ in my home. I'm to mirror Christ, right? So when I do things that don't bring glory to God, I'm essentially saying that Christ is a liar right? I'm saying this is what Christ actually acts like when in fact it's not. And so a marriage that is impacted by the gospel, and so that truly understands, uh, you know, I represent Christ for my home. The, the woman represents the bride of Christ, the church. Uh, there are ways that the home should function. Uh, there are ways that we can glorify God, and there are ways that we can't glorify God and the things that we shouldn't do. Uh, but when you, when you grasp that reality, you realize our soul purpose being married is to glorify God. And that happens in, in different ways, you know, having children, going out, preaching the gospel, loving each other faithfully, uh, being faithful to each other. That works itself out in, in many different ways, not, not just those things, but those are, are how you're glorifying God. And that's the ultimate purpose. Uh, the Puritans would put it as like, they would say something to the effect of the marriage telos or marriage's end is to glorify God, right? That's putting it in a very Edwardian way. Mar marriage shows the gospel it puts the gospel on display and a marriage that has been impacted by the gospel will glorify god in every way yeah and 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 i think it's it's um you know when we think of uh ephesians chapter 5 uh, first peter um chapter chapter 2 3 4 uh it tells us like because we are we're we have okay we have been impacted by by the gospel Therefore, we have to live a 
gospel impact our life in every area of our lives. And I think, at least from what I from what I got from the book, is that there is no there's no area in my life that the gospel should not have, like, you know, shown light in. Yeah. Like, let me just repeat the name, the title of the, of the chapters. Um, first, the first chapter is the gospel in you. Chapter two is the gospel in your spouse. Chapter three, the gospel in your family. Chapter four, the gospel in your and your church. Chapter five, the gospel and the wor- world. And chapter six, the church, the, uh, forgive me, the Christian life. So it's every single area of your life. And what I thought, I don't know if you, I'm, I'm sure you thought about this, that it really goes from God, you, yeah. your spouse, your family, your church, the world, and just all over your life. So yeah. it goes from your relationship with God first, and then your, you know, your horizontal, um, uh, you know, leaving, you know, with your, with your spouse, you, you, Man, your your wife will, I mean, at least my wife will call me out as soon as I'm I'm wrong. Like as yeah. soon as I say something that's not true, she will call me out. You know? <laughs> and I can't lie to my wife. So if I li- if I'm living the gospel, she'll know that I'm living the gospel. And I think that's the whole idea with, you know, with having uh second second Peter when he talks about uh like fa- like false prophets, right? They're right. basically clouds without water. And trees without fruit. And the same thing. You can only fake it so much until it starts getting, you know, so you start closing your doors and start being called out by your wife, basically. Right. And then the same thing with your family, you know, just being, you know, um, a good testimony to your family as well. And then your church. And it just tends that we are, we put a good image at church many times. Yes. And I just like that. Before you even got to the church, you spoke about your spouse, your family, and then the church, which is our family and yeah. family in Christ. Uh, and then the world, just in, you know, just in general, uh, the world and then your Christian life. So any, any, do you have any comments on that? Any? Yeah. So I, I did that on purpose. I, one, I knew if anybody was going to read this book, they at least might read the introduction. I want to get, I want to gospel soak that. I want to put that, the gospel on full display in the introduction. Uh, But it worked out perfectly because I wanted to basically draw circles around the Christian life. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it begins with God. The gospel begins with God. Uh, Then it moves on to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So if one of those pieces is, is missing, so say the gospel impacted you and skipped over your marriage, but then you move on to your kids well, actually, if it skipped over your marriage, your kids and your church and everything else is going to be missing. And so as you just continue to trace out that circle, you realize these are all built upon each other. And it leads back to you and God. You know, this is, this is what it's pointing back to is, is the true relationship. I mean, the gospel is it, it's not for I mean, it is for individuals, but it's not individualism. Mm. You know, it doesn't just have to do with yourself. The gospel saves individuals, but it's not individualism. Um, you know, I made a mention, like, the reason why I wrote this book is, is not, we have these Christians who like to go and they like to just bring their Bible to their prayer closet. And that's their Christian walk is mm-hmm. their own private time with Jesus. And I'm not hating on that. I think that's a good thing, a good practice to have. However, if that's where your Christianity begins and ends, you've got a real problem. And you need to consider whether or not it's genuine Christianity, because it's going to, like I said, it's going to go into your home. It's going to go into your marriage. It's going to follow you into church. It's going to follow you into the world. And so I did that on purpose because I really wanted to highlight just that fact, that principle there that uh, the gospel bleeds out into everything. And there are only, I mean, there are only six chapters. So there are many more places I could have gone, but I felt like those were the most central, uh, the most obvious ones that, that I could have I could have painted a picture for, and uh, perhaps in the future, I'll, I'll do some more and maybe some, some uh, areas of life that people don't tend to think about. But those were, I feel like, were the most obvious and uh, the most needful, at least in, in the church for, well, the, the church where I uh, was a pastor at, at the time, but really for evangelicalism as a whole, modern Christianity, you know, we need 
uh, good husbands. We need good mothers. We need good Christian children uh, who love the Lord. Uh, we need church members to love each other. We need people to go out and to be evangelists and to be missionaries. And we need Christians just living the Christian life, uh, walking faithfully with the Lord. Right, right. And and, and I think uh, I think it's, it's very well put. I don't think you're missing the mark at all with this book. I don't want to. I, I don't want to like talk about every single point. Although I mentioned the chapters because I have to, I don't want to yeah. mention every single point of the book because I do want our listeners to to read this book. It's only six to six. Uh, I was going to say verses. I don't know why. Six to six <laughs> pages. Six to six pages, and man, every every page is like a punch. It it really <laughs> is. It really is. Um, and I'm not. I'm not speaking highly because you're here. And I always say this, if I don't mean it, I'll just say it. Um, but in reality, I was taking a back. I was very surprised at how well written, uh, very well written and very well put. And, uh, and I, like I was saying earlier today, like I had to stop and meditate on, on the stuff that was said because I was like, like, I've never seen it that way. You know, yeah. and I think it's, and I think it's good. I think that's a good thing. Because if we approach every single subject um, feeling like we uh, like we like we know the subject or that we, there's nothing else for us to learn, I think that's a that's a red flag. But oh, yeah, yeah, Noah. Any any anything that is there anything in this book? Is there anything that you would have liked to put to put in this book that you didn't put? Like, was there like a chapter maybe that you were thinking about? You're like, nah, I'm not gonna write that or. Is there anything that we have here that we don't have here that you wish that was here or everything that's here is everything you wanted it to be? Uh, so this was the, the the heavily edited version. So again, I wanted it to be sort of like a longer gospel tract. And so I, I did edit it down to 66 pages. I, I wanted to, uh, the original idea as I wanted to do something along the lines of the gospel and apologetics, which kind of goes hand to hand with evangelism. Uh, the gospel and I guess I don't really remember the title that I had for it, the gospel and scholarship and how Christians if your life is impacted by the gospel you're never gonna stop desiring to learn more about God and, and the gospel and so um, there were a few other chapters I wanted to put in there but uh, like I said I think these were the most essential and the most important uh, for those out on the street or the, even those in the churches who are sitting in the pews Sunday mornings who say, you know, well, I'm a Christian because of this, this, and this. Well, I think you need to, you need to read the gospel. You need to hear the gospel. You need to love it. And, and, uh, Lord willing, truly understand it, be saved by it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I know that, and this is a little on the side. I know that you're, um, I know that you're, you're a true believer of singing Psalms and services. Yes. <laughs> Are there, uh, is there perhaps a, a book um working on you know in that in that um about that you know theme about that uh subject is there something yeah. is there something that you're working on yes yeah, so i'm uh, if this is in the the back of the folder right now i'm trying to to finish a uh, school right now at cruciform bible institute and so it's been pushed to the back of my last semester but i i am working on something uh that has to do with the regulative principle of worship uh, you know, worship is, it's one of my main focuses. It's what I love to talk about and preach about all the time. And so there is a chapter in there expl uh, explicitly on psalm singing and, and why we should recover psalm singing as Christians, because it's kind of been a, a forgotten practice right, in the right. church. Yeah. So, so if we can talk about that a just for like two minutes. Yeah. So psalms and hymns or just psalms and no hymns? Uh, what do I do personally? No, just what you think it's, it's. Oh yeah. yeah so I am, I am all for singing psalms and, and hymns. I, I lead, I, I lead music at Christian Bible Church. And so we sing, you know, we sing psalms every Sunday. We sing hymns. We even sing some of the modern stuff. Like um, I, I guess Sovereign Grace would be considered modern. I mean, we sing right. Right. Uh, some City of Light songs too. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are, I mean, those are all examined by our pastoral team to make sure that they're biblically faithful. Uh, I appreciate the position where people would say, you know, well, we can only sing Psalms. I really appreciate that position and I, I get it. Um, however, I, I think there's a case to be made from scripture where we can go outside of that. 
spiritual um, songs. Yeah, yeah, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and and so, mm -hmm. uh, but I I appreciate it. But I do think I would take the position of uh, not exclusive psalmody. I take the position of psalmody priority. So psalms right. should take priority in the Christian life and in the church. Um, I just uh, I taught about it last night uh, at Cruceform Bible Church that uh, we're Christians. Uh, we are commanded not just once or twice, but several, several, several times in all of the Bible to sing. And what should we sing? We should sing God's praises back to him. And so uh, we need to be faithful to do that. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you on, thank you on that comment. Cause um, <laughs> I've had, I've had a lot of people ask me that I've had, yeah. believe it or not, I had a lot of people. Yeah. Ask me that. And, and, you know, it may, it may seem like a, it may seem like a simple question or a simple answer, but in reality, there's, there's a lot to it. So this yeah. is the reason why I would actually appreciate reading Although there's many, there's many books, but there's just so many contemporary books that just take yeah. the, they take the very spiritual. It's just more spiritual than than biblical in my, and just yeah. because it's spiritual doesn't mean it's biblical, you know? Right. 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 And, and I, and I think it's, I, I think that, you know, I, that approach sometimes could be a little, you know, and so I try to stay away from, from a lot of worship books just because, yeah. You know, those are the books that sell a lot, a whole lot. So they are. Yeah. Um, so I would actually appreciate a book, and and like I said, there, there's 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 good solid books on worship, but I would actually appreciate a you know a book that that is just that is the main focus, and just you know ex explaining away like biblically from a biblical perspective, uh, perspective, and like Puritan and you know all, all these things when talking about worship, um, because let's be honest, you can read a Puritan book. And you pretty much get the answer for what you're looking for, because yeah. they'll turn oh, yeah. they'll turn a verse into something so like deep and and just beautiful that it it, it just feels like a spiritual song. It feels yeah. like a, like a like a good biblical song, like a like a hymnal, you yes. know. But um, but again, that's that you know that's not the point of this video. But I did <laughs> wanted to bring that up a little bit. So thank that's you. For, my, that's one of my favorite subjects. So I will yeah. talk about that anytime. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, brother, thank you for being with us today. Um, for those who, who are watching, thank you for staying this long. And and, and, and honestly, I, it is a pleasure for me to have Noah here uh, talking about the gospel. Um, if there's any questions that you guys may have, if you guys want to get a copy of, of this book, do. Um, well, I bought this on on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but is there like a do, do you have a bookstore? Do you have a, a, a bookstore like perhaps in your in your in your church they or a link there where it would be actually more profitable for you to 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 sell it through or just uh, Amazon? So I I do sell it on Amazon. That's the easiest place to get it online. Mm -hmm. Um we do we have a, a, a section where we give away books at our church and we we sell some books at conferences sometimes and so if you happen to catch me at the church or at a conference, I usually I sell them a lot, uh, not very expensive, but I usually just just give them out. I mean, they're they're really for the Christian, and uh, I really encourage people to to give them uh, to family members. For example, when this book first came out, you know, I had a couple of people in my church say, "Well, I'm going to buy this, and I'm going to give it to this such and such family member because I'm going to say I know the author." So, if you want to give this book away and say, Hey, I know the author, author, you guys have, even if you don't know me, you have permission to do that. All right. Right. <laughs> right. Anyways, brother, thank you so much for, for being with us and, you know, taking the time out of your busy schedule. Cause I know you're busy. I know we're three hours apart. Thank you for being with us and just talking about this book. It was a pleasure. Is there anything you want to say before we go? Uh, just for any Christian anywhere, remember, I mean, the gospel is, is central to the Christian life. So don't, ever feel like you've graduated away from the gospel just soak your life and make sure that the gospel has truly impacted your life for anyone who wants to follow you where can they follow you or, or get in uh, contact with you yeah i have uh, i'm on facebook under noah wyatt um i don't think there's a whole, whole lot of people named noah wyatt so uh i'm on there i'm on instagram as noah wyatt 98 uh, i think that's my username i'm also on twitter um, and you guys can reach me one of those ways. For those who are watching until the end, I do want to say that our brother Noah ha uh, has sent a, a signed copy of this book. 
So if you are interested in this, in this book, we're going to do a giveaway, uh, a signed book giveaway. Is there anything you want to say about that, brother? Uh, yeah, um, I'd love to be able to, to give that out and to get that into somebody's hands. And uh, as long as the Lord uses it to glorify him himself. Um, so we'll, I will be posting the rules and the stuff, how you can enter the giveaway. But brother, thank you so much for being with us again. And you have a wonderful day. Yes, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure.